Hello everyone, nice to see you. Welcome to today's Woven Daily. Um, we're in Acts chapter 13, starting to read halfway through verse 20. Um, but uh, before I get to reading the passage, we just need to get a little bit of the context. Um, so this is a fascinating part of Acts, where the story almost starts to shift from Peter and Peter's sort of early adventures, Peter and John, and shifts towards Paul and Paul's missionary um, journeys along with um, uh, some of his friends and the people who go with him. And um, uh, here we get the sort of first bits of, of a speech by Paul, uh, which is fascinating for us. Uh, so Paul and Barnabas, they get sent off from Antioch. And they're praying and they're fasting as a group. They feel like God's called these certain people, so they send them off. And, um, and I love just uh, as an aside that the early church seemed to constantly be praying and fasting and sending off missionaries. It seemed to be the thing that was on their heart. How can we send off more people from our context to go and reach others? So they send Barnabas and Saul off, uh, and they go on this journey. And, uh, and we pick up the story when they uh, get to a synagogue in uh, Poseidon, Antioch. And uh, so they haven't gone terribly far. They, they get to this uh, place, and they go to the synagogue. And, uh, and when they get there, uh, they, they get asked if they have anything to say. It's in verse 15. Uh, brothers, if you have a message or encouragement for the people, please speak. And, uh, and then uh, we get a little bit of passage and then the bit that we've got today is the very centre of that speech that Paul makes. So let's read it together. Um, halfway through verse 20 says this. After this, God gave them judges until the time of Samuel the prophet. Then the people asked for a king and he gave them Saul, son of Kish, of the tribe of Benjamin, who ruled for 40 years. After removing Saul, he made David their king. He testified concerning him. I found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. From the man's descendants, God has brought to Israel the Saviour Jesus, as he promised. Before the coming of Jesus, John preached repentance and baptism to all people of Israel. As John was completing his work, he said, Who do you think I am? I am not the one. No, but the, he who is coming after me whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. It's a really interesting speech that Paul chooses to make here. I just wanted to draw out a couple of things um, for us today that are maybe not the most obvious things, but are more the kind of journey that they seem to be on. Um, Paul and his companions at this moment, and how they seem to approach the mission that is in front of them. You see, it seems to me that they aren't, I think we sometimes get in our heads that the early church is sort of going around storming into places and preaching the gospel to a load of people who just don't want to know and they're sort of forcing their way in always. It was one of the things I think you can see in the way in which Paul goes about his mission here is that actually what he's looking for are people of peace. He's looking for people who are leaning in to the message of God and open to him sharing something. And so he shares. And so that's why I read that little verse in verse 15, because I think it's the kind of turning point of this story, where they say to him, OK, guys, have you got anything to share? And then boldly, Paul steps up and gives this speech. Now, fascinating, what you see in this speech is um, a load of Paul sharing things that the people that he's speaking to would agree with. Do you notice that? You know, you sort of think, well, for us, as we're reading through this, you're like, Paul, get to the point. Talk about Jesus, Paul. Talk about his death on the cross. Talk about salvation, Paul. Come on, get on with it. But actually, isn't it fascinating that what Paul is doing here is he's building a foundation for the gospel based on the experience of his hearers. Now, that's a little bit challenging for us to do because Paul here shares the same background. He's not crossing a cultural divide. He shares the same background as the people that he's talking to. But actually what we see is so we can easily sort of try and excuse ourselves from this and say, well, Paul shared a, the same background as these guys so he could share right into the full journey of God to show how Jesus. I mean, that's easy for Paul. But actually, you see then Paul starts to cross cultural divides in future missionary journeys that he goes on and as he does that he seems to use the same technique he goes to a place he looks for people who are open to him and open to him sharing something and then he starts from where they are at and builds towards talking about Jesus and what he wants to share there's always the challenge of the gospel but it usually follows starting where the people are at 
that he's trying to reach. And that got me a wondering today as I read this passage for us. Where were people at? I just wonder what the coronavirus is doing to our culture that gives us a window of opportunity to speak the good news of Jesus if we start where people are at. Now to know where people are at, we have to spend time with them. That's always part of Paul's missionary journey. He goes to people, he goes and listens, he goes and spends time with them. And as he does so, he starts to work out where the joint foundation, where they agree on something, and then how he can therefore go from the place of agreeing into the challenge of the gospel. And I believe that's our big challenge for us right now. As we look around ourselves, as we talk to our family, as we connect with people, as we make friends in our community, on our streets, wherever you find yourself, trust that God has placed you into that place. Do a little bit of work of listening, of working out where there's agreement. You know, I was just chatting to a guy the other day who was saying, you know, I know that there is something out there, I just don't know what it is. See, what a fantastic place to start from. That's a point of agreement that we can go from. There is something out there. I believe that too. And actually, when you look at all the challenges that face us at the minute, oh my goodness, do we need to know that something is out there? But there's an opportunity to then to bring the challenge of, but I know what's out there. It's not an impersonal being. It's Jesus. And he wants to meet you. And so my prayer for us is that we can do that work. We can be a missionary people as well, just like the early church were missionary people, spending their time praying and fasting and sending off missionaries, that we can also be a missionary people, reaching out to those around us. Going on exciting adventures with God. That's the challenge that's before us. So I've got three questions for you as I finish today. Number one, where do we see God at work around us? You know, it seems like that's the question Paul was always asking. Where's God at work here? Where should I go where God's at work? So where do we see God at work around us? Where do we see common ground? This is the second question. Where do we see common ground with people who don't know Jesus that are agreeing with things that actually we agree with as Christians? Because that's a great foundation to build from towards being able to share the gospel. Where also, this is the third question, where do you see people of peace in your life? People who are open, who are leaning in when you mention church or God or Jesus or something about your faith, rather than trying to change the subject as quickly as they can, they kind of lean into it, they're interested about it. They're the people that I believe Paul would zero in on. He would go, try and spend as much time with them as possible because they're the people who maybe it seems like God's stirring something. And the final fourth question is this, where do you have opportunity to speak? When God gives you opportunity to speak, do you use it? So often I feel like I'm given an opportunity and I miss it. And I want to be someone, I don't know about you, I want to be someone who takes the opportunities that God gives me. So let's pray this morning. Lord, I thank you so much that you are with us. Lord, I thank you that we have something to speak and say. We have hope to bring because we have hope burning on our hearts because of all you've done for us. And Lord, I pray that you'd show us where there are people that you are already working in. And help us speak, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a fabulous day.